School Trustees. Mr. Andy Melilla, President. Mrs. Cheryl Prisco, Vice President. Mrs. Jessica Bailey, Secretary. And members, Mrs. Rhonda Nelson and Mrs. Wilma Vasquez for joining us this evening. At this time, our MCJROTC will present the colors and our Portage High School Choir, led by Mrs. Holly Mockaby, will sing our national anthem. successes of our students. I appreciate the hard work, dedication, and encouragement of their parents, guardians, family, friends, and above all, educators and counselors throughout the district who have worked with our students through their educational journey. I wish you all the best of luck in your endeavors. This is not the end of your educational life. You will continue to learn both in college and your jobs. The future is your future is in your hands. I, along with the Portage High School principal staff, celebrate you, the class of 2018. And now I would like to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Amanda Allenetz. Good evening. I, along with the members of the Portage Township School Board of Trustees, wish to extend a sincere appreciation to the colleagues, parents, 
grandparents, friends, and guests here today. Each and every one of you sitting in the stands of this arena have contributed to the overall success and achievement of the distinguished graduates of the Portage High School Class of 2018. Graduates, you have excelled in every arena. You have proven over and over that nothing is beyond your reach. Your academic excellence, award-winning performances and achievements at the state and national level in music, theater, athletics, and project problem-based learning is remarkable. Your accomplishments demonstrate that by all tangible measures, you are the best and brightest. It is my honor to stand before you this evening as the superintendent of Portage Township Schools, as each of you is a unique success story for this nation's public education school system. Portage Township Schools is extremely proud of the academic achievement of this graduating class but more importantly, of the individuals you have become throughout the years as an Indian. You have developed as well-rounded individuals who value civic responsibility. I only hope that the experiences you have encountered as a Portage Indian have sparked your desire to continue giving back to others for the overall good of the community. We want to see you further enhance your ability to flourish as young adults who will lead lives made rich by learning. When we hit milestones such as a graduation, it gives us a chance to reflect, and through reflection, we often can learn and grow. As you reflect on your personal kindergarten through 12th grade journey, you will recall moments of doubt, times of discouragement, and struggles along the way. Hard times are something we all face and something I wish I could guarantee you will never face again. Every graduate sitting here today is launching into post-secondary education experiences and workforce opportunities that are exciting and new. But even with positive change, challenges still lie ahead. Being that this is the reality, I want to give you just one last lesson as a Portage High School student to help you along your newfound journey. So here it goes. In 1910, former President Theodore Roosevelt gave a 35-page speech entitled Citizenship in a Republic. On page seven of his speech is a passage that became known as the man in the arena. In this particular passage, President Roosevelt made a statement that is relevant to all of you embarking on new and exciting opportunities. So relevant that I wanna share it with everyone in this arena today. It is not the critic who counts not the man who points out the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph for a high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails daring greatly. At one time or another, each and every one of us has been and will be again the man in the arena. This phrase implies that an individual is heavily involved in a situation that requires courage, skill, or tenacity, as opposed to someone sitting on the sidelines and watching. So class of 2018, in this final lesson, I want to convey to you 
a few heartfelt parting words as your superintendent. Don't be afraid to go out into this great big world and conquer it. Let courage, skill, and tenacity define you in future moments of doubt, times of discouragement, and struggles along your future path. Be courageous in the pursuit of your passions, hopes, and dreams. Continue to build on the skills you've acquired in your K-12 journey by further accessing the knowledge, ability, and training necessary to achieve your goals. Have the tenacity to stay the course on the path to achievement. You will have critics, you will have shortcomings, and you will make errors. But it is the hard work, enthusiasm, devotion, and endless desire to succeed that will guide you. Use your talents. Don't fear the judgment of critics who watch from the sidelines and never be embarrassed to be who you are. Because you will fail. But when you do, ask, what can this teach me? Congratulations, class of 2018. May you leave this chapter of your life daring greatly, all the while having the courage, skill, and tenacity necessary to fulfill all your hopes and dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Elanez. At this time, please enjoy our next song by the PHS Choir. A wise poet, Hannah Montana, once said, <laughs> Here we are now, everything is about to change. We face tomorrow as we say goodbye to yesterday, a chapter ending, but the story is only just begun. A page is turning for everyone. As we take a look around us, turning both left and right, we see faces that after today, we might never see again. People that we have grown up next to all of our lives, some of which we met in kindergarten, others we might have just met a few weeks back when we got our assigned seats for graduation. While some of you are beginning to realize that although we wanted to leave this place as soon as possible, looking forward so badly to an additional four years of education, of which I cannot afford, we come to think maybe high school wasn't that bad. Okay, it might have been rough at times, but come on. look at us now. Most of us are still here, happy as can be, excited for the future. High school is a time of growth a time in which we find ourselves not only as students, but as individuals. We begin to work towards a long list of goals we have <laughs> made for ourselves, one goal in which we are accomplishing today. Take these next words from our greatest childhood inspiration, Dr. Seuss, and apply them to the future. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. Today marks the beginning of your journey. This quote captures the idea that here we are, graduating, that from here on out we'll be making our own choices. All of our lives up to now have been structured and straightforward. We have been on a definite path through all of the grade levels to get to where we are right now, which is here, our high school graduation. Tomorrow high school will be behind us, and the moments before us are not for all that we have achieved and accomplished, but for what we choose to do, who we choose to be, and for how we choose to be remembered. As we move on after these long four years, very, very long, especially if you took AP Chem or had Sandra back, for, for some of you, what might be the happiest day of your lives after the past 17, 18 years might be our parents' status. With this, I would like to take a moment to thank my own parents, Jaime y Sofía Serrano, pónganse de pie, por favor. Les quiero agradecer por todo lo que han hecho por mí. Espero que en momentos como ahora sientan no solo orgullo, 
pero también que todo el esfuerzo que hicieron para darnos una mejor vida valió la pena. Sin su constante apoyo yo no estuviera aquí. Me siento agradecida con Dios por darme la bendición de tenerlos como padres. Los quiero mucho. Gracias. I'd also like to thank the Joe Biden to my Barack Obama, our Vice President, Castro Magnitas, <laughs> for helping me along the way this year in office. You're a great POTUS. Thanks, Casper. While multiple teachers have inspired me and helped me to get to where I am today, there are special three that I would like to thank in particular, Mr. Cabin, Mr. Marvin, and Mrs. Bachman, or should I say Josh, Mark, and Stacey, since I can call you that now. <laughs> I would like to thank you each for not only providing me with an exceptional education and engraving so what, this is no longer in a real Z1, and educate, empower, and inspire excellence permanently into my brain, but also for your positive classroom environment and for your genuine care towards the students. For this, I will always remember each of you. Now to the class of 2018. We did it. We survived reading, writing, rocket math, AR, I said, NOIA, whatever that was, <laughs> the ACT and the SAT. We survived applying to colleges, trade schools, jobs, and making any other plans for after high school. We survived countless nights of staying up way past our bedtimes doing Kathy and I's terms the night before they were due. Those rough nights were failing, refreshing Schoology at 11.59, praying our assignments went through. And we even survived waking up past noon on e-learning days, only to cram seven classes worth of homework. All of our teachers may do at 2.35. Charles Dickens describes our time in high school perfectly. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Congratulations, class of 2018. We finally, finally made it. Thank you, Alexis. Next, I'm honored to introduce the salutatorian for the class of 2018, Sydney Ford. favorite color is red. I read about 300 books a year. My friends and family mean more to me than anything in this world, and the only reason I'm up here giving you a speech today is because I'm slightly better at taking tests than all of you, except one, of course. <laughs> I'm supposed to get up here and tell you that life is what you make of it and everything works out in the end, but today I have something better to lecture about. So buckle up. What better place to start than the beginning? It was 2014, we got lost in the halls at least three times a day. We ran from west to east in only five minutes. It's a difficult task. Our football team only won one game, but not our freshman team. We went undefeated! And Sass is our leader. Pharrell's song Happy played on the radio 15 times a day, and school is easy. Moving on to sophomore year, high school started in not in like that easy way. High school that middle school and elementary school teachers talk about started. It was a year to hate teachers, then to love them, and then to hate them again. Castle up and left. We were in that weird phase, but we could drive, but not by ourselves. <laughs> and the band instruct constantly. The only great thing about sophomore year was that cell phone use was a band. Remember that? <laughs> Junior year was weird. Yes, it was as hard as sophomore year, but it wasn't as bad. You're not really an underclassman, but you're not a dumb freshman or sophomore either. And in general, you're just waiting for something to happen. 
Instead of using our newly owned driver's license for good, we used it to go to Duncan and to not show up at school on time, if at all. Sorry, guys. Bossman Gill came and took over that year, and we finally got to go to prom, and we were able to whip and nae our way out of practically anything. In the end, we reach our senior year. Powder puff, homecoming, prom, all passed quickly. High school nation came and took over. The walkout happened, in which I'm proud of whoever took part. Football, basketball, volleyball, golf, tennis, robotics, swimming, cross country, track and field, bowling, cheer, dance, soccer, softball, all had their last meet, mat, or game. Each tried their best to bring home Portage another W. We got our first jobs, our first cars, our first and last senior night, and in the blink of an eye, it's over. Here we sit at our graduation with our caps and gowns on. We're in a place we thought took forever. Some of us are moving on to college, some the army, and some a job. Just always listen to Cardi B in this respect. <laughs> I'll do anything that brings me a check. Now I promised I would tell you something worthwhile at the beginning of this speech. No matter where you go, no matter how far or close you are, Portage will always welcome you home. Just look at every graduated class. There's always a handful that still can't get out of high school drama. But in all actuality, Portage is your home. It's a place where you made memories, bad or good. No matter how much you want to leave or how much you want to stay, it's always going to be home, no matter where you go. So before I end your suffering or wake a few sleepers up, I want to give a few thank yous. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for being my rock through all of high school and for t teaching me to not take life too seriously. Thank you to my friends, Janessa, Caitlin, Leah, Elena, Megan, Kayla, Kenzie, Ian, Anna, Ev, and Nate for showing me I'm worth it and telling me I'm as funny as I think I am. Thank you to PHS Class of 2018 for showing me I'm a part of a group bigger than myself. Thank you for giving me something I'm proud of. Thank you for giving me something I look forward to every two, every day. Wow, that's bad. Thank you for having so much drama so that every day was different than the last. Thank you for the constant Twitter fights, whether that be from the yearbook or Ryan Bliss, wherever you are. They always made me laugh. So to end this speech that I made way too long, I just have one more thing to say. For one of my last moments as a Portage High School student, it's been a great day to be an Indian. To introduce the valedictorian for the class of 2018, Emily Scannish. to thank Mr. Gill, Ms. Alanez, and all of the faculty for doing more than just providing us with an education. Thank you especially to my family and my classmates that have accepted me for who I am and supported me through this journey. I know you're all sick of hearing me complain about calculus. All of the various countdowns, till the weekend, till homecoming, till break, till prom, they have all come to an end and led us to this moment, graduation. But that doesn't mean that there is nothing left to look forward to. In fact, our futures are brighter than ever before, and I know that we will experience more countdowns, and it won't be easy. It was hard for me to start writing this speech because I kept trying to think of specific moments from these past four years, but I couldn't narrow it down. We've experienced every sort of emotion, and we've accomplished so much. I remember leaving eighth grade and being so excited for high school, mostly because we were told that we would never have to take ISTEP or really any standardized test ever again. Boy, was that a lie. 
Probably the most memorable characteristic of our class is our tendency to express ourselves whether it's welcome or not. The dance team almost didn't exist this year, but it rose up from the ashes thanks to one girl with a voice and passion. We've had our plays censored, we've had our voices censored, but our generation came together as a nation this past April, and we didn't back down. We are a generation that makes our voices heard, a generation that refuses to settle, and this is how we prosper. The world is big, and you may feel like just another blurry face in the yearbook sometimes. That's where friendship plays in. Developing deeper connections with the people around us makes the blurry faces become clear, and it makes the world a little less intimidating. One thing I regret about my years in high school is staying in my show and not getting to know more of you. But life after graduation is a fresh start, even if you're not going away to college. You can do whatever you feel that you need to do. You can say hi to that girl with the cute outfit. You can block that boy. You're in charge of your own life from now on, and it's up to you to figure out how you want to live it. While the speech was hopefully short enough that people haven't completely checked out, the impacts we can make will be endless. Class of 2018, I urge you to take the lessons of these past 13 years and apply them to the rest of your life. Live to inspire through more than just your tweets. Never let your voice be silenced. And now, more than ever, stay woke. Thank you.